Welcome back for English Language Arts. I will be able to analyze proverbs to formulate a meaning. So at this time, it's okay if you don't know what proverbs means. We're going to be going over that in a little bit. Um, but before we get started on that section of our learning today, um, first we're going to talk a little bit about context clues. We've gone over this many times throughout the school year. Uh, strong readers use context clues in the text to figure out what unfamiliar and difficult words mean. Today's lesson will show how to use context clues to define some of the content vocabulary in making choices. And making choices was the um, reading that you had done in the last lesson. So when you read informational text, you sometimes come across difficult content words that are specific to the topic. There are words that you don't usually see in, in all books, um, but they're specific just for what we're talking about. Understanding these words is important to fully grasping the whole text and its message. So what I want you to do is I want you to go back to making choices. I want you to skim both of those texts and circle words you did not understand during the first reading. Make a list of the words here in this box. Go ahead and pause and go do that and come back in five, four, three, two, one. So for instance, one of the words that I was having trouble with is annual, all right? So where is it in my text? It is here. And the sentence is, between 1732 and, 50, and 1758, he published an annual, an annual or yearly book. Now, the context clues, one of our context clues that we've talked about is when somebody puts an or, especially comma or, that lets you know that we're about to receive a definition. So the definition according to the text is yearly. It says annual, comma, or yearly book. So that is the guess that I am taking is that the possible definition for annual is yearly. Now, it is important that we check a reference. A reference could be Google. Um, make sure you always put the word and definition when you are looking it up on Google. And um, another one that you could use is just a dictionary if you have one at home. So when I look up annual definition, it says annual as an adjective occurring once every year. As a noun, it says a book or a magazine that is published once a year under the same title but with different contents. Hmm. So really, I have two definitions here. So now I need to see, is it an adjective? Or is it a noun? So let me check the text. It says, he published an annual, well that sounds like a noun, or yearly book. Oh, he published a book and he did it annually or yearly, so that actually makes it an adjective, okay? So this is being used to describe the book. The book is the noun. Adjectives describe nouns. So that means that being an adjective, I could look and say, okay, occurring once every year. So that, that means yearly, once every year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, here's my revised definition, it's just once every year. Now that I've looked it up um, in the dictionary. So what you're going to do is you're gonna go and look at the words that you have circled here, and you're going to put them here. Here's the word, tell me what paragraph they're in. Read the sentence and maybe the sentence either right after or right before and see if there's a clue. There might be some kind of context clue. Sometimes it's or or um, also called mm, is another uh, context clue. So let's say there are no context clues. You're like, I don't know what it means and there's no context clue that tells me what it means. Then you would put none or no clues, and then our definition, you will put your guess, okay? Based on what you're reading, what do you guess that it means? And then you will look up what the definition actually is, okay? All right, so 
you will use one or more of the, those content words, those are the words that are in the chart, in an original sentence that demonstrates your understanding of the word. So for instance, let's say you didn't find that many words um, in the text that you don't know the meaning of, you can use annual. Now what I want you to do is write a sentence using the word annual. So go ahead and pause because now we're gonna move on to Proverbs. So go ahead and complete those previous slides and then come back to this uh, portion. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's talk about Proverbs. In the previous unit, you learned about how a type of non-literal language metaphor helps writers explain the unknown. What have you learned about this type of non-literal language? And when I'm talking about metaphors, I'm talking about um, when we were reading the poem, a prairie, a green sea encircle me. Um, what, what did you learn by doing that practice? Today, you will examine another literary device that authors often use to communicate ideas about economic choices, and they're called proverbs. So proverbs are wise old sayings that are passed down from generation to generation to teach people important lessons about life. What are some proverbs that have been passed down to you? This is like a repeated phrase that you hear all the time. Um, and one that my mom always told me and my dad, they, they both always said it, practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. And they would tell me this because I wouldn't want to practice. I just want to be good at something. Um, but the truth is, and it the proverb is true, the more that you practice something, the better you get at it. So it's important to practice something so you can get perfect at it. Um, so that's one of the proverbs that I was raised with. Um, you tell me, what are some that you're raised with? And you might need to ask your parent and that is fine, or grandparent, um, what, what phrases do they constantly tell you? So in the second proverb for Ben Franklin's Two Cents, um, he writes, if a man empties his purse into his head, no one can take it away from him. Now, I know that a person can't actually empty a purse into its head. And when I'm talking about purse, I'm actually talking about, it's like a bag of money. Back in Ben Franklin's day, all men and women carried purses because it, it was the only place to put their money. It was, a, it was a bag that they put their money in. Now men have wallets um, or money clips or something like that. Um, but everybody, um, every adult that had money would carry this bag and it would be called a purse. So now I know what a purse is. I know that you can't actually put a purse in my head. I can't put coins in my ears. That would not be good. So I know that the author is using a non-literal phrase here because it's not something that somebody could actually do. But what does it mean? Well, when you empty your purse, you're spending all your money, right? If you look in your wallet or your purse and there's nothing in there, you've spent it all, right? So while head could literally refer to the part of my body, it could also kind of refer to my mind, right? Because that's what's in my head. It's not like I want to spend all my money on my haircut. I want to spend all my money on my mind. So I can interpret empty his purse into his head to mean spend money on his mind. That is, spend money on your education. So what this proverb means is that when you spend money on your mind or on your education, it's something that never goes away. Nobody could ever take it from you. So when you express the idea that way, it's a bit hard to remember, like uh, spend money on your education so that way nobody could ever take it away. But when somebody says, if a man empty his, empties his purse into his head, no one could ever take it away from him, that it gives you a visual and it makes it more memorable. So some other literary techniques that would be considered non-literal language because emptying a purse into your head, you can't do. Um, repetition. 
uh, for instance, practice makes perfect. It's not a repeating word, but some proverbs have repeating words. Um, but this one is a repeating sound. Practice makes perfect. And then you have rhyming proverbs. I couldn't actually remember any rhyming proverbs. So I went on here and I found, um, I found this one and I really liked it. So when you open your mouth, you have a choice. Don't let hate and evil hijack your voice. So we have a rhyming choice voice. That's what we're talking about when I'm saying that some proverbs use rhyming in their, um, in their, in their, uh, right, uh, proverbs. So, and this one means when you open your mouth, so like when you speak, because that's what comes out of your mouth, right? You have a choice. Okay. So that means that when I talk, I can control what I say. Don't let hate and evil hijack your voice. So hijack means to take control of, okay? So don't let hate and evil control the things that are coming out of my mouth. And so I really like that one. That one was cool to me. So there are many others that I'm sure you can look up. So when I'm looking at that second proverb, if a man empties his purse into his head, no one can take it away from him. That's an example of non-literal language. And what it means, when I broke it down, it means invest money in education, in my brain, in my thoughts. So what you're going to do is you're going to go back to this text and you're going to look at the other Proverbs, these two right here. The way to wealth depends on two words, frugality and industry. Early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. A penny saved is a penny earned. I want you to focus on these two, four and five right here. Focus on those ones for this chart and write them here. Tell me what the literary technique might be for these two. And then tell me what do you think that they mean, okay? All right, and then after that, what I want you to do is I want you to do a Google search, Proverbs about money, okay? That's all that you need to type into Google. You would go right here, Proverbs about money. And you're gonna have lists, you're gonna have, you could even click images and you could see them here. Um, and so you could look and click on a link and there's some in the Bible that you could definitely take a look at. Um, and so you're going to do that and you're going to find one. And when you find one, I want you to write it right here. What did you find? The exact proverb. I want the exact proverb right here. Then what I want you to do is I want you to tell me what does it mean? Now that you have looked at it, you selected it, what does that proverb mean? So, and that is um, it. And that that's all that you need to do with Proverbs. After that, um, then I want you to silently read um, for a half hour to an hour every day. Um, you could go to Epic. You could go to Sora um, and enjoy some reading time. Um, please click the turn in button when you are done. And I will talk to you later. If you need any help, please.